Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be building this Rex Japanese Zero from Masterpiece Models. This is a slightly unusual kit in a couple of ways. Um, first of all it's a full resin kit which is uh, not that unusual but it's unusual for me. Secondly of all it's an aircrafting 135th scale which is very unusual. And thirdly it comes pre-wrecked which is uh, quite unique I think. But of course being 135th scale opens lots of opportunities to use uh, figures and so on to incorporate it into a diorama. So if we open the box we can see the instructions here with the uh, box art on the front. The box itself is just a plain cardboard box. This is exactly how I opened the box so unfortunately this sheet of uh, photo etch here which contains the internal uh, struts for the wings and so on was just lying on top like this which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, this is not a cheap kit so it would have been nice to have a little piece of uh, cardboard backing that to keep it uh, from bending. The other large pieces were loose in the box just protected by these um, polystyrene foam uh, balls. You can see the tail piece here and you can see huge amounts of flash on that although it is very thin and you can just peel it away in most cases. I haven't built a resin kit before so I'm genuinely not sure how common this amount of flash is on a resin kit. So if you are familiar with such things then please do let me know in the comments below. We also have a bag of smaller parts including the cockpit floor and the seat. And then we have this large main part here which is the two wings, or really the one and a half wings. Again lots of flash on the back there, this time a bit thicker, that's a couple of mils thick. That's going to be a little bit harder to remove. And the fuselage itself. And you can see there the details where for example the skin, the um, aluminium panels have been stretched over the ribbon. The instructions is just a single sheet of paper, which is uh, fair enough. It's not a complex kit. Essentially the uh, cockpit goes into the floor of the fuselage, the fuselage goes onto the wings, and then the photo etch canopy goes on the top of that. And you do get a couple of resin pieces which are used to um, shape the photo etch canopy parts around, which is a nice little addition. You can see those there in the bottom corner of the instruction sheet. So my first job was just to cut loose the flash which would easily come off and that was the majority of it. And then I had to sand the rest. Of course this is a resin kit so you do need to be careful. You do not want to be breathing in the resin dust and therefore I wore a respirator when sanding this and I also made sure that I could uh, keep the dust fairly well contained to get rid of it later. And even with a very rough dry fit as you can see here we can tell straight away there's going to be a fairly large gap between the body and the main wing piece which we need filling. And if we look on the other side here you can see that due to the thickness of the wing piece there's going to be quite a large three or four mil step up from the bottom of the fuselage up to the wings so that we need dealing with as well. And you can see also that the uh, training edge of the wing is quite thick too. That's not such a huge problem on the outer edge because the photo edge will go there over the top but it's more of a problem on the inner edge and that will need sanding at the risk of losing the detail so when I come to sanding that I'll probably sand it from the underneath because the way that this aircraft will be posed the bottom of the aircraft will not be visible. Here you can see a close-up of the detail on the wing with all those rivets there. I'm really happy with that I'm sure that detail will come out very nicely when it's been painted and weathered. Equally the photo etch has a good amount of detail as well and that's going to look very nice when it's bent into shape and attached to the wings. And the canopy there you can see all the rivet details too. Unfortunately I don't have a photo etch bending tool so I used a steel edge ruler and I did manage to get that bent without damaging anything.
Kits like this, of course, are not really for the beginner modeler. And just a simple example of that here, um, it's not quite clear how this instrument panel fits to the cockpit floor. Does it go in front of it or on top of it? And it's not quite clear how the seat itself goes on as well, the position the seat goes in. So little things like that do need a little bit of work. You need to keep dry fitting the pieces and of course you need to do some research as well to check these things. Equally, even the cockpit floor itself, there's no kind of location pins into the body of the aircraft. So you need to think about how that's going to go in and how it's going to be secured as well. Don't get me wrong, the end results are really nice, but it's just something to think about when you're making these kits. Looking at the box art, it shows a very clean break between the two pieces of the main body. And then it shows all these pieces of ribbing and cabling and so on. They're not included in the kit, so I decided to take a few pieces of excess uh, photo etch and try to use those as that. This I think is from a King Tiger kit, if I remember correctly. And this is how you get the canopy bent into shape, by using these provided blocks. And while those pieces were forming into shape, I stuck them down with some masking tape to hold them there for a few nights. Once an initial coat of Tamiya primer had been put down, I could see just how much cleaning up was required. This seat is a good example. And the edge here as well. So again, lots of sanding was done, again with breathing protection, and then a second layer of the primer was added. And here is the cockpit once it's had the initial coat of paint. There are a few additions I made myself, so the um, pedals, for example, are not in the kit. I made those from uh, grab handles from a, a tank. And the piping on the floor is added by me as well. I, I know it's not accurate, uh, but it just busies that cockpit floor up a little. You can't really see it inside the cockpit, but I like it anyway. And I did some basic weathering there with some chipping on the seat. I then glued the cockpit into the main body of the aircraft. And once it was in position and fairly sturdy with some super glue, I used quite a large amount of epoxy glue uh, from the underside to make sure it would get fixed in there permanently. And you can also see as that fuselage joins the wings, we've got some good old gaps there to fill. And again I use a two part epoxy to start to fill those. And here you can see I filled in those gaps initially but they're not quite at the level of the other pieces yet so they will need to be filled a bit more. And you can see that I added some uh, red primer colour there as well. I'll explain why I did that in a moment. Okay, so let me explain my uh, painting logic. My original plan was to do what you can see on the screen here now. So uh, some grey primer just to make sure the paint stuck to the resin. And then the Japanese use a kind of red colour primer for the aircraft. So I would put down some red paint. I'd varnish that in place and then I'd use hairspray chipping to apply a layer of green over the top and then chip that back to the red primer. That was my initial plan. However, then I did some uh, more research, which I probably should have done before I started painting, but I was really eager to get going with this. And I realized that a lot of the images of the uh, Japanese aircraft show even the primer slowly wearing away and revealing the metal beneath. So with that in mind, I then went for this sequence here. So Tamiya primer again as the base coat, then some aluminium over the top, varnish that to hold it in place, 
add a layer of hairspray then add the red World War II primer over the top of that and use some water to chip that back to reveal the aluminium beneath it. And then on top of that primer, another layer of hairspray and the uh, top coat of the green. And then chipping the green away to reveal the red below or the aluminium below that if the red has already been chipped away. So I had to do a bit of a reset, so I put down some aluminium paint over the top of the primer. I didn't make this coat 100% opaque because I felt that some of the primer showing through would just help with the uh, smooth transitions on the surface. Once the aluminium had dried, I put down some hairspray. I mixed a few tones of red to act as primer, put them over the top, and then hairspray chipped them back. The only problem with this is that the chips are quite sharp and if we look at the reference images that's not really how they are. So in order to smooth those transitions I then went back with a very thin coat of the red colours over the top to try to smooth those transitions out. I added another layer of hairspray, I added some Tamiya XF11 green and then I hairspray chipped that back. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's confusing me a little bit now to be quite honest. I, I probably, well I definitely should have done some more research before I started this but I do think that the end result does not look too bad at all. I'm quite happy with that. The next task was to put some uh, insignia on it. The kit does not come with any decals, but I used my circle cutter to cut out a, uh, a circle, funnily enough, from uh, some Tamiya masking paper. I applied some hairspray where the insignia would go, masked it off with that uh, masking sheet, and then again chipped away at the insignia and I went very very heavy on this. And you can see here that although I put the red down on a base of solid green the water has activated not only the hairspray under the red but also the hairspray under the green as well. So in some cases here I'm chipping away just the red to reveal the green, and in other cases I'm chipping away the red and the green to reveal the um, primer, the red primer color beneath. That was accidental, but I think it works out quite nicely. I know that some Japanese insignia had a white band around them. Mine doesn't. Initially I was going to do an oil pin wash on this aircraft and then I figured that given the state of the paintwork this aircraft has clearly been abandoned for a long time so I decided to really slap on the oil paint wash all over the aircraft and hopefully that gives an impression of just general dirt and uh, soil and grime that's built up over the years that it's been sitting in the jungle abandoned. I should mention that I put down a gloss varnish coat before I started using the oil paints. Often in aircraft modelling we will allow the wash to dry and then wipe it away with a paper towel. But I'm not going to do that because this is supposed to be a very old and dirty aircraft. And of course I will add more dirt and leaves and so on when this aircraft goes in the diorama. But for now it's finished so let's see the final result.
So guys, that was my build of the wrecked Japanese Zero from Masterpiece Models. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different kit to normal. And although I can't promise that it will be the next video, and I can't promise it will be particularly soon either because I'm in the middle of a big move at the moment, um, there will be a diorama coming of this uh, aircraft in a jungle scene. And here's a quick sneak preview of that diorama in a very early stage. And in fact my Patreon supporters can see work in progress photos, including photos of this diorama in a more advanced stage. So if you want to find out more, you can find a link on the screen now and in the description below. Okay, so thank you guys for watching, and here are some videos that might interest you.